Okay, this is Murphy and Lemieux. Lemieux got moved. Lemieux laid an egg on the bottom of her cage. Then another one in a nest with another male that was in love with somebody else. And he went in and broke up the one that was in the nest. So I, so, um, and Murphy was stuck with Arquette, who wasn't doing anything with him either. So I tried combining these two into Murphy's nesting territory. And it took them 30 seconds to put this together. They love each other dearly. However, the hen had not, she was on her third egg by the time she got moved in with him. And she was already forming it because they lay every two days. Um, so there's no way that those first few eggs are going to be fertile because she didn't actually have a workable mate. Um, and I was watching them now. I've never seen them breed, which is common. Uh, and more than half of my birds I never see breed because they just don't breed when I'm in the room. doesn't mean it's not happening now. They just like things be private. So I've been watching their eggs. She's had... She laid two eggs before she got there, and she's laid four more. And um, I've been looking for fertility, and when does it happen? On the last egg that she has laid, which is her fourth egg in the nest, but her sixth egg overall. There is definitely a thriving embryo in there. So I'm praying that she lays one more egg, because that too would be fertile. Since I comb my nest down to um, three embryos per nest, um, if a pair only throws me two viable embryos, that's perfectly fine. It's practically a full nest for me. And um, occasionally people wonder why, why I do that. And when I say I comb nest down to three embryos, in that particular case, I actually do mean that I kill the rest of the embryos. I put them in the freezer and freeze them. And some people say, why do, you, why do you do that? Well, in case there's something sentient in there that can feel, I want it to be over quickly and gently. So, um, so their cold day is five days before the first egg is ready to hatch. And the reason for that is because when you get later on in development and you candle eggs, you can't tell who's the oldest and who's the youngest because the chick is essentially filling the whole egg. But I'm, since I'm culling for the three oldest embryos, that's fine. I find an egg that looks full, that's a keeper. And I'll find three of them, and then the rest of them will be in varying stages of being very young. And uh, I will put them in the freezer. So, <clears throat> anyway, why do I call my nest down to three embryos? Because I have large birds, and I want large birds. These birds are two to three times their natural size. This is like really extreme size. So, that means that the calcium demands and protein demands of the chicks are massive. I have um, pictures in which a foster hen of mine brought up one of her own chicks, a normal parakeet, next to a budgie chick. And the budgie chick is literally three times the size of the normal parakeet chick. No, it's twice the size of the normal parakeet chick, and its crop is three times the size. Both their crops are full. The normal parakeet chick can one-third of the amount of food that a budgie chick requires, along with all of the proper nutrition on top of that. So, these guys simply can't raise as many chicks as they can lay eggs. Um, if you give them four, the, the two of the chicks come out small. If you leave them with five eggs, one, two of the chicks come out normal, two come out small, and one dies, and so on and so forth. If you leave them more than that, then you just have massive chick death. So, um, there, there's, it's hard for some breeders to get, you know, there's that whole wistful thinking, gee, maybe the egg that I froze is going to be my grand champion type of thing, but that's just defeatist thinking. The fact is, if you leave them with only three egg chicks in the nest, then all of the chicks will be show size. You won't have this crazy disparity in size that you get when you leave them with more chicks. All of the chicks will be full-size birds. So you get, if you don't get greedy and you pull that nest down to three chicks, you get three show-size chicks. 
If you do get greedy and you leave four or five chicks in there, you get dead chicks, you get tiny, tiny little birds, and you may get one that shows size. So that, that whole, oh my God, I might be freezing the one that's a champion. No, what you're doing is making sure the ones that remain are champion sized. So <clears throat> anyway, that's, that's how, um, that's why I cull down to three eggs. And if a pair ends up bringing only two chicks and three, I have to say it, even with three chicks, the, sm the youngest chick will be small. However, the size distinction is not so much that they can't make it up during their, um, you know, their younger months. Once they get out of the nest and they eat on their own, they can eat enough and catch up on any growth that they miss. So it's just a little bit. Whereas I left two nests, one foster nest and one um, budgie nest with four chicks in it. And in both cases, the two youngest chicks are ridiculously undersized. I will never do that again. I was trying to feed them more to see if it would work, so I doubled up on their wet feed and all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't work. They, they just can't do it. So, so anyway, if she lays one more egg, and there's, they have two chicks in there, then that leaves room if um, Luna here, who has four embryos, because I'm leaving her with extra embryos because last time all her embryos died, and I'm counting on one or two of these embryos failing. But if by chance they all survive, one of them can go into this nest. Same thing here. So this is, you can't, oh, here he is. He's down here talking to this girl. This is Kenny Loggins um, and Bella Rose. And she laid six eggs so far. And the sixth one is fertile. Yay! So, again, I'm hoping for a seventh egg. Because it will be fertile since the sixth one was. And um, two is good. I'll get some big, beautiful babies, and I can give them. I also left four uh, embryos in the golden face nest, so I'll give them one of those, and they'll have to be in their nest. So I am happy that they proved that they're fertile. I'm also not in a big hurry. I mean, so I'm I'm moving to a place in my stud where I'm going to start keeping so quality birds for a lifetime instead of breeding them and getting the baby I want and then selling them. <clears throat> so this guy and his brother Murphy are so quality birds. So I'll be keeping them. They'll be keeping the mates that they're with. So they'll get bred many more times. They'll get bred again next spring and next fall and probably the year after that too. Um, so it's not a disaster if they have only one chick. What the happy news is that they are fertile and a functional bonded pair so that's good these two on the other hand i just don't know she's not discouraging him but she's doing crazy girl um but they do talk they seem to be having a discussion so let's see if she ever went in the nest not yet see that big wood chip right there i placed that so that she'd kick it if she went in the nest if she hasn't gone in so I don't know. I'm having a heck of a time with these last few hens trying to get them to pick a male. But we'll see. <clears throat> and this girl started laying very, very late, but she has instant and complete fertility. So I'm tickled pink. These two are a high value pair. He has the most incredible feather. And she is actually, he's fluffy, so he looks like he's as big or bigger than her, but he's not. She's big. Um, and he's more medium sized. So, and of course, the yellow face is always a good thing. <clears throat> so, what are we doing with him? So, anyway, everybody. Oh. So, this was chalk and um, lemony. And they finally did bond. She finally did go into the nest box and start laying eggs. But something was wrong. <clears throat> she was just acting like she didn't feel well. She laid a weird egg, like she didn't have enough calcium on board, and I caught her and she was underweight. So she is not in condition to breed. So I pulled her, um, and she and Chalk are out in the flight cage, and she's going to get a little R&R. &R. Oh, and of course all the eggs are blanks as well. Um, so she's going to get a little R&R &R for two weeks or a bunch. I'm going to um, stack her up on calcium 
and uh, then we'll give him another shot in the fall. Um, same thing for steel and hyacinth. They never did drop a fertile egg, so they are out getting R and R. Now this is their second time. Now they did make me a baby, so there is fertility there. I just don't understand why it's not happening. Now. I made a baby last time. It was the sixth egg, and I had to give it to somebody else to raise. But they did do it, so um, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. Is it time to break them up? I've seen them breeding. They're very strongly bonded, and they're a high-value pair. So is it time to break them up, or is it time, or do I give them one more shot this fall and then break them up over the winter? That's the question. These two seem to finally be making progress. So... That was after introducing a bunch of other hens, she got jealous and decided that she liked him after all. Silly girl. I'm still waiting for this girl. She is in the nest. Look at all of this. See all that grass and everything in there? She is going in and out of there all the time. But, no egg yet. However, this hen is probably coming up on two years old and she has never laid an egg before. And what that means is it's gonna be a while before her hormones come into place and she actually lays that egg. She's developing an egg bump, so it is happening. And she's got all the hormones that have her loving on her man. But uh, it'll be a while, because her body is getting broken in late. It's like an older woman having their first baby. I can relate, honey. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what's going on. Oh, and then this, here, look at this. So they all three hate each other. I just don't know. I may just have to put them back out and wait for a little while and see what happens. Um, so this is due to be our first baby. The hatch date was yesterday. No, two days ago. However, she had two blank eggs in the nest. Therefore, it's very likely that that, that um, first baby won't hatch until Friday. Because the first one was due Tuesday, but it was blank. The second one is due today, but it's blank. So Friday would be the first hatch. But we're going to check anyway. Because I do like to know when babies are born. Nothing yet. Looking good. Okay. So, that, um, so I'm expecting that baby tomorrow. And then the next one to hatch out a chick will be Luna. Her due date is Saturday, but she has one blank egg, so I expect a chick Monday. This one, her due date is Sunday, one blank egg, so I expect a chick Tuesday. So, the chicks are going to start happening. We're just waiting for it. So, oh, and I finally did the um, fertility check on these two. This is Quartz and, oh my goodness, did I forget her name? Uh... That's Loren Dubois. Um, I forgot her name. Anyway, I finally did their fertility check, and they have, they're all fertile but one. So, they're doing great. So, um, we're all on, we're done with fertility check for a while until somebody else starts laying eggs. Uh, these two are, these three are doing nothing, so I'm just going to put them all back out in the flight cage. Um... <clears throat> So anyway, that leaves us with, I know these two are going to do something, so I'm not going to break them up. I'll just give them all the time they need. So that gives me four, three is seven. Oh, and the other one is this one. This is Thames and um, Loren. And uh, she's laying a whole bunch of beautiful eggs, and they're breeding like crazy, but the eggs have no embryos. So, their final fertility check is Saturday. I'm hoping something will show up in those last few eggs, but if it doesn't, I will break them down and put them out, give them a break, and try it again. So, um, that means that I have two in this stack, four in this stack, and two in this stack. These two do seem to be making some behavioral progress, so I'm just going to leave them. Um, so, I have two, I'm going to leave two pairs out here that are still working on it as far as putting it together and bonding and laying an egg. And then I have two, four, six, 
eight, sixteen. So that leaves me with fifteen um, nests that should be developing some chicks here pretty quick. Um, and I will. I am going to keep breeding straight through into fall, so eventually I will get it together and restock the empty cages with pears. But right now, I'm just not having any luck. The pears that are left to breed right now are just not ready to do it. So I'll take a little breather and try again in a few weeks. Okay, tell her, tell her to give me one more egg, okay, Ms. Murph? One more egg is all I want. You two. These two are brothers. Um, which could very well mean that the reason those last eggs are full when the others aren't is behavioral. They're just slow movers. But that's okay. Murphy, Kenny Loggins, one more egg each. Tell those girls to put it together. See these two males here? That's um, Indus over there. We're having that discussion. This is the job of the males, is to defend their territory. And they do that by coming up to the edge of the bars, which is, is the edge of their territory, and singing their territory songs. So the two males will sit there and sing songs to each other all day long. And it is not sweet. It is, it is a challenge. It is, this is my case. Back off. That's what this guy's doing right here, too. Because all those birds in the last cage. See, these guys are totally blocked, so he can't see them. But the birds in the next cage, you can see. So he's over there singing his territory song. Just telling everybody, my cage, back off. Okay, so that is the update.